In this episode, we'll be learning how to turn inner turmoil into inner peace from a professional teacher, public speaker, and author. Welcome to the show, and how are you doing? Thank you, Toby. It's lovely to be here, and I'm doing great. Thank you so, so much for joining me on this episode of Mirror Talk. I really appreciate your presence here. Like, we were saying before we started recording, like it has been a lot of months, you know, coming, building up to this moment. And I'm just excited to be speaking with you right now to learn about your life journey so far, to learn about the inner work that you've done and how, you know, you've turned your life around basically. So before we get into, you know, the inner work and the um, awareness work that you've done so far, um, can you just like share a bit about your, your life story? Like your stories about lives, about spirituality it's about personal growth can you share how it all started from when you were 19 years old when you woke up one morning finding your mother dead in the bathroom yes that that was a big trauma for me <laughs> yeah um, but prior to that you know my both my parents were alcoholics so yeah. life was really very I was very fearful I was a very fearful child and young woman mm-hmm. and um, and I carried that through me um, in, as for the next 20 years, essentially. So I moved out to California when I was 21. I graduated. I was a software engineer. So I worked in the software engineering field yeah. and um, then had my two boys, became a stay, stay-at-home mother. Mm-hmm. And I realized because something happened with a couple of mothers at school, like a, a business altercation, and my mind would just spin and I couldn't sleep for days. And I realized that there was something in me that was making me react that way because I recognized other people wouldn't do that. Mm. So that was the first real inkling to me that that really it was probably something from my childhood that was affecting the way I was living my life. Mm. And that was kind of the start of my journey. Before that, I really hadn't been interested in spirituality. I, I was I had a little interest, you know, I I would wonder about it, but Mm. I hadn't done any of the work. I did a lot of like the physical work. I did a lot of dietary changes, a lot of cleanses to try and clean my body out, but never really went into my mind or to my emotions or any of the inner work until that point. Wow. And I was like for you at that moment, like was it was a turning point for you, you know, when you woke up in the morning and you found your mother dead in the in the bathtub, in a bathtub. How did that, you know, change the course of your life, basically? Well, it didn't. Ch- well, I mean, it did change it. The losing of a mother is going mm. to change it. I mean, essentially, the family disintegrated. Right. I kind of felt lost yeah. um, without my mother, but I didn't know how to deal with it. Mm. I, I didn't deal with it. I just. I just kept on with life because I didn't know how to deal with it. I had no one around me that even really talked about it. Mm. And so I just suppressed it because I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yes. So So it wasn't until, so after this point uh, where I realized something was going on, I had a doctor's appointment fairly soon after that. Mm. And I can't remember why I went to this doctor's appointment, but he recognized I was more stressed than I should be in the situation I was in, which was a stay at home mother with two young boys. Yeah. And he asked me on a, ser- on, a, on a zero through 10 scale how stressed I was. And it was an eight. And then he asked me why. Mm. And it was right then that I knew it was from finding my mother 20 years earlier because the tears were still just under the surface, right? Mm. As soon as I thought about it, the tears were there. So it was clearly still living inside of me in a mm. big way. So he, he worked with me with this technique called EFT for about 15 minutes. And I walked away from that appointment, being able to tell the story in my mind without those tears, mm. they had gone. Yeah. So it was huge. Yeah, it was a huge shift right there. Wow. That means after the EFT um, session, you were able to let go of the tension, the trauma that you've kept, that have been suppressed in you for the past 20 years, basically. Right. Now, it was just the surface layers. I didn't realize that so much at the time, but, you know, it's kind of opening up the subconscious mind. Yeah. And once you've let go of the surface layers, the next mm. layers show up. That's true. So I did have to work on it again, but mm. at a deeper level next time. Yes, yes. So for, for people out there, you know, who also experience PTSD and yours um, was as a result of, you know, alcoholic parents when you were young. Um, how was that like for you? How did it, you know, come up? Like, how did your alcoholic parents affect your life in 
in, in a way that, you know, cause you to have PTSD, even all, all the way to the age of 30. And how are you able to, you know, um, you know, deal with it after the age of 30, basically, to let go of it finally? Or, or is it, do you believe that it's, it could be gone totally or it's something that you still deal with all the in days of your life, basically? Yeah, no, I, I believe it's gone totally mm. because I can see where I was and I can see where I am now. So, yes, yes. I was very fearful. I was, I was afraid of all sorts of things. I, I had all these this um, judgment and criticism in my mind, right, towards myself, towards other people. I was always trying to do the right thing, not to step on anyone's toes, not to get mm. anyone upset because, you know, from my childhood, if I did that, my dad would get angry. So yes. I had to be very careful. Mm. And so, you know, I also had some other traumas in that I was adopted as uh, an infant, a six week old. I was adopted into a family mm. where the child that was adopted before me, they had kept her for six months and then the birth mother had changed her mind. Oh. So they had had this other girl, baby girl for six months and they had just lost her. Mm. And I was brought into that situation. So mm. I think even that at that young age really um, causes a lot of um, um, what's it called? <laughs> you know, you're afraid of yeah. um, being rejected. Yeah. So I had a lot of fears of actually leaving my home hmm. because when I left my home as a six week old, I never came back again. Right? Yeah. When I left my birth mother, I never came back again. So I was afraid of leaving my house hmm. because I was afraid I would never come back again. Yeah. So there were a lot of things that that actually kept that fear living yeah. inside of me, and yeah. it was really nice to be able to let it go. Yes, that's true. Wow. And before you know, you finally let everything go. You suppressed everything. And you 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 are you know, a software developer, for example, and using logic into you know going through life basically. I, I was I was that you know coping with that that tension, that, you know, um, fear deep inside of you, but still, you know, functioning well as a software engineer, a software developer, using logic to, you know, navigate through life. I loved logic, right? Because I knew if I did this, then this would happen. Or if I yeah. did that, that would happen. And mm. I didn't have that at home, right? I had a, a life where it didn't matter what I did. Actually, it didn't matter what I said because I was always wrong because my dad was always right. There wasn't any logic, right? He would say one thing, one night when he'd been drinking and the next morning it was different so there was no logic there so that's why i believe i went into software engineering and it <laughs> felt good yeah. it felt safe because mm. i knew what was going to happen yes so um yeah it seemed like a it seemed like a logical thing to do <laughs> yeah that's true so but before we before we jump into you know um inner work and awareness about the our inner self like can you talk also like or advise people out there who are experiencing PTSD right now, those who are having some post-traumatic um, disorder, um, can you advise them on how they could deal with this, you know, from your own experience, how they could deal with this and uh, what to go, um, how to go about it, basically? Well, that would be the inner work. Yeah, <laughs> because, <laughs> yes. Yeah, because I didn't start to address it until I started to do that inner work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the inner work is a progression. So, um, EFT, this technique that this doctor used on me, I actually wanted to check it out. You know, I have that engineering background. I think you have an engineering background, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. I'm yes, right. yes. So I wanted to know that what he did with me that day was not just a fluke. Mm. So I wanted to know that it really worked. So, like the next, sometime in the next couple of days, we had a 17 year old cat at home that we had been told needed a daily saline shot. Mm -hmm. And I hated injections. And so when I gave him that first injection, my hand was just shaking so much. I was not going to be able to do it. It would be too stressful for me to do each day. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, this is a great test case. So I tapped. So EFT is short for emotional freedom technique. And it's also called tapping because we're tapping on parts on the body as we're talking through something. Mm -hmm. So I tapped about my fear of hurting my cat my fear of injections, my history around injections. So every aspect of that event that was happening that I was going to have to do, yeah. I tapped about it. And the next day when I gave him the injection, the needle just slid right in and my hand did not shake at all. It was totally calm. Mm. 
So that's when I realized how powerful this technique is. It's deceptively powerful, right? It doesn't really look like it should be doing much. Yes. But at that point, I realized, okay, this really does do something and I'm going to start working with this. Yeah. So then the first part is actually becoming aware, right? Mm. Becoming aware when you're feeling emotional or when you're feeling fearful or when something's happening, that that's the first step. And to begin with, I would only be aware of maybe once or twice a day. And then I would tap about it. Yeah. But as we go, as we keep going through this, mm-hmm. our awareness expands mm-hmm. and we become aware earlier on as to when we're reacting to something. And so we can tap on it then, tap about it then. Yes. So, and if someone approaches you and asks, um, you, you talk about, you know, inner work and awareness. How can I, you know, perform some inner work into my, um, or myself, basically? How can I perform some inner work? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to go about it? How, how would you explain this? <laughs> well, this is, so this is all inner work. With <laughs> EFT, mm. it's inner work because you're tapping on the physical body mm. as you're thinking about something. So you're bringing an emotion to mm. your mind. And that is letting the stuck energy of the emotion pass out of the body. So it's inner work because it's within the physical body. Mm -hmm. So let me share a story from before COVID. And I think this help explains, helps explain awareness and the difference people have in awareness. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of this group, we would sit in a semicircle with our eyes closed and I would play a series of chimes just just sound chimes then we would open our eyes and everyone would share their experience Mm -hmm. so I realized at this point it's a spectrum so on one end of the spectrum and this is where I used to be Mm -hmm. are people who can only hear the sounds with their ears and then there are other people who can hear the sounds with their ears but they can also feel some of the sound vibrations in different parts of their body And on the other end of the spectrum are people who can feel those sound vibrations throughout their bodies. They have a depth of awareness that -hmm. the people who can only hear with their ears have no idea about. They don't even know that exists. But when we share that experience now, now everyone who's listening know that that exists. There are some people out there who have a very shallow depth of awareness. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was. And then there are some people who have a a great depth of awareness Mm -hmm. who, when they hear things like music or even voices or conversations, Mm -hmm. they're hearing a lot more than the people who are just hearing with their ears. Mm -hmm. So that's the inner work. It can take you from hearing with your ears all the way to feeling inside the body. And it just takes inner work. It takes dedication to -hmm. do that, but Mm -hmm. it is possible. And this can be done through um, EFC also. Like, how can I start? How can I increase uh, my ability to hear more? My ability to be much more aware of what is happening inside of me. Does it have to do only with EFT, or are there some other things I could do in order to uh, become more, much more aware of what is happening right inside of me? Right. There are there are multiple techniques that mm-hmm. will do that. That will work. EFT is just the one that I used mm-hmm. and. Once I realized how powerful it was, and to me, it's that physical aspect of it mm-hmm. that really matters because where I've got to now, which is you know right down at the end of the story, which we haven't got to yet, yes. is I know that the emotions and the mental, it's connected to the physical. It's actually stored physically in our body. Mm-hmm. So that's why I believe EFT is so much more powerful than something like meditation. Yes. because there isn't the physical aspect to that. I do believe it's beneficial, but I believe EFT is more beneficial. Yes. And we can learn, we can learn to do this ourselves, or do we have to like have a session with a doctor like you did or with someone like you, for example, who's an expert? Or is, is it something we could just sit down at home in our, in our privacy and just do on ourselves? Absolutely. We can learn it ourselves. Yes. The, the person who developed it was actually a chemical engineer who lives in California, and he gave it away for free when he first gave it away. So there are thousands and thousands of videos out there on on the internet. Now, just be aware that a lot of them have moved towards the positive. Mm. And the power in EFT is actually letting go of the negative that we stored in our body. Because Mm. once we let go of the negative, the positive is already there underneath. The light is already underneath the darkness. So we're really trying to find our truth and the negative. So that's what we do. We 
it's it's um it's it's a little bit like acupressure so we're tapping on certain parts of the body which are the ends of acupressure yes. acu um chinese meridian systems mm -hmm. and we're tapping on those as we're feeling an emotion and it's mm. letting that stuck energy go mm. yeah so anyone can do it there is some people are a little afraid that yeah. those big emotions are going to annihilate them <laughs> but really it's just stuck energy and it yeah. wants to leave the body and there is really freedom on the other side mm -hmm. so that's why it was really good for me to experience it with smaller things like giving my cat a shot, an injection, mm -hmm. right? then I knew that there was freedom on the other side mm -hmm. and then I could go further with it. Yes. It's freedom once you get into the light, basically, once you can get the light out of you. Yes. Yes. But I did like some side effects to, you know, practicing EFT. Some side effects? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, one of the great things about um, EFT to begin with is actually it gives you feedback as mm. you're doing it so which are kind of side effects right so a lot of people will yawn and that's the sign that energy is releasing from the body some oh. people will burp mm. a lot of people will cry mm. and those are all big size some people get very tired mm. and those are signs that the energy is releasing from the body mm. but i started doing so i started using it every day but i wanted more because i could tell my mind was becoming quiet so i actually wrote down the list of every emotional memory i could think of and i tapped through one each night for about an hour to an hour and a half each night until i'd gone through them all and I found my mind becoming quiet. Mm. And I remember opening my kitchen door one day and, and thinking, I feel like I'm living in a different reality mm. because those voices in my head, which I realized were my dad's words that I would just replay in my mm. mind, I'd been programmed with them in childhood. They mm. were no longer there. Mm. So my mind was quiet and it was so different. Yeah. Wow, oh, that's so beautiful. And, and that way you turn, you know, your inner turmoil into inner peace, basically. Yeah. Well, that was the start of the journey. That's kind of the first phase. Yeah. And I realized that the EFT, what it does, it kind of, it opens up the subconscious mind, like we mm -hmm. said, but yes. in the process, it expands the awareness. Mm -hmm. So I became aware of my emotions, yes. which I hadn't been before because I'd been suppressing them. Mm -hmm. But underneath every emotion is a set of physical sensations. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we use the word frustration, right, I'm mm -hmm. frustrated. Mm -hmm. There's tension inside of us. Yes. Now, to begin with, I couldn't I wasn't aware of it. I couldn't even be aware of it. If someone asked me, so where are you feeling that tension inside of you when you're feeling frustrated? I would not have been able to tell them. Mm -hmm. But as I went through this process, I was able to feel it. Mm -hmm. So as I say, I'm frustrated. I can feel tension across my solar plexus and my stomach. And once I became aware of that, then I could go deeper. I could either tap on about feeling the frustration in my solar plexus. That's what I could use the words for tapping. Yeah. Or I could actually try and feel them, mm. which is what I call feeling your feelings. Mm. Right. I'd actually try and hold my awareness, my attention on that tension in my solar plexus, yeah. which sounds basic. Right. It sounds like it should be easy <laughs> to do. Yes. But I was so used to suppressing it, it would try and disappear, right? I'd try and focus on it. Mm -hmm. And then I would breathe or I would move and it would, it would, it would slink away from me. Oh. So I realized I actually had to hold myself like a statue and I'd actually stop breathing. And then I could focus on it and I would keep my awareness on it. And then I would need to take a deep breath or I would feel a shift. Mm -hmm. And then I would do it again. And I would keep doing it again and again with the same thought, mm -hmm. this thought that had emotion. And then it would be free. It would kind of be like tapping. Tapping is doing kind of the same thing, yes. but with memories. But now I'm doing it at a deeper level with the physical sensations mm. and it would dissipate. So then the thought became free of emotion. Yeah. It no longer has power over me. Wow. Oh, that's great. So then I started, then I started doing it with mm -hmm. collective trauma. So in the evening, instead of tapping, I would lie on the sofa and I would think something that still had emotions and I would bring up things like 9-11 for the States and the, mm. the earthquake that I was in here in the States. I would bring those memories to mind, just feel them, I'm not trying to change the feeling. I'm just trying to accept it and it would dissipate. And then I'd do it again 
dissipate some more and do it again and dissipate some more. So it, it took um, it took some willpower to keep going. Yes. But but I could feel myself becoming lighter in the process. My mm. I, I felt lighter. You know, I was no longer carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. Mm. Yeah. So the stress was relieving. Really? And at some point, so at some point during this process, I realized I could actually hold my awareness inside my body mm. once the tension had dissipated. And I'd never heard anyone say this before. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't yeah. have anywhere to look. Yeah. And so I just, I just kept playing with it. So, mm. okay, so if I move my awareness around what's going to happen so yeah. i realized i could move my awareness around and then i would find a piece of tension on the inside mm -hmm. and i would do the same thing i'd hold my awareness on the tension it would dissipate i'd bring it back mm -hmm. dissipate some more and i'd do that over and over again and then at some point i was able to put my awareness inside my head this just sounds really weird i know this sounds yeah. really weird yeah <laughs> but that's why i'm sharing it yes <laughs> so once I got inside my head, yeah. I kind of released enough tension that at some point I heard something release mm -hmm. and it sounded, it sounded cause I could hear it cause it's by my ear. It sounded and it felt like old fabric ripping. Mm -hmm. And I was a little worried. It's like, am I hurting myself? Uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> but I've been on this path for so long. And it's like, I feel like I've been led along the path. So I knew that it must be okay. I'm just releasing tension. It's got to be okay. And I realized when I did some research that it's the connective tissue or the fascia that I was hearing release. And so I would do this more and more. I'd release more and more deeper and deeper tension. And I could feel sometimes the bones in my skull just relax. But I hadn't known before how much tension was there. Yeah. And at each point, each point, I would get deeper and deeper and realize this tension that had been hidden from me all these years I didn't know was there mm -hmm. and so you know this last year I had new x-rays taken mm -hmm. and I had x-rays from 2013 and I can actually now see that my bones have indeed shifted in my skull my jaw has centered my eye sockets have even aligned I don't even know how that happens yeah. and my neck I have scoliosis um have had it since I was a child mm -hmm. and my neck is straightening Mm -hmm. And I have actually grown half an inch as a 55-year-old. Wow. So I know this work works. Mm -hmm. This inner yeah. work really yeah. makes it brings us more into alignment, both, mm -hmm. both mentally and and physically, physically and yeah. spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, whenever you talk about, you know, um awareness and you know, being aware of what's happening in your body, I was thinking, oh, um, maybe you, you get to a, a stage or a level in which um you are consciously able to go in through your system and say, oh, this is, this are, um, these are my lungs, these are, you know, my kidneys, these are, these are my, this is my intestine, my lung intestine, and my large intestine, my small intestine, and this is my stomach, and okay, this is um, something that's to be fixed there. So I was thinking that that was, that was it, basically, for the, at the beginning, until I, you know, enlightened myself a little bit more on, you know, what awareness of the inner, um, inner self has to do with, yeah. That's a really interesting <laughs> thought, yeah. right? Because I thought the same thing. It's like, mm. but I'm aware, I'm absolutely aware of exactly where I am, mm. but I'm moving my awareness through the connective tissue. Mm. So I don't actually know, I can't tell the difference between muscle or an organ mm. because it feels the same, but I know where I am. Mm. Right? I, can, I know where I'm sensing. The only difference I can tell is between bone and non-bone because it's so dense in bone. So I can put my awareness in my teeth mm -hmm. and let go of tension in the tooth roots, mm -hmm. which feels really weird. But I can tell that difference between the bone yeah. and the non-bone. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I can also feel like if I'm in my eyes, I can actually put my awareness in my eyes mm -hmm. and behind my eyes. And that kind of hurts <laughs> to let go of that tension. So I know when I'm in there, but but. But the organs is really interesting because yes, I've never been able to tell yeah. where I am. But but the connective tissue goes throughout everything, right? Yeah, that's true. I believe it's where our soul. I believe our soul resides in the connective tissue, and that's mm. what I'm moving my awareness through. Mm. How long did it take you to to reach this level of you know awareness? <laughs> yeah, well, I started when I was in my late thirties, and I'm now oh. fifty five. Ah, yeah. So. You know, yeah. but, you know, I know people who've been meditating for 20 years and their minds are still so busy. 
Hmm. Whereas my mind quieted within within one, two, three years. So from that perspective, I know that this is a faster track to inner peace, which is what I was after. I was only ever after inner peace. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't aiming to change my physical structure. That was just a side effect, a mm. nice side effect. Mm. Wow. Yes, I understand that. Oh, that means you, um, you just have to like do these practices every day. Um, you know, just like, for example, lying down, bringing these um, emotions, or uh, processing these thoughts, like these events that's happened. And that way you let go of tension gradually gradually and you're able to be aware of you know the inner tensions that you that you have also basically is that right yes absolutely okay. yes okay no, then there was nothing i would rather do mm. because it felt so good to let go of tension that i've held on to for 30 40 50 years yeah. that feels so good so mm. yeah now it's kind of a part of me i do it the first thing i wake up in the morning i can feel where that next level is tension is and i work to release that Last thing I do at night, when I wake up in the middle of the night, mm-hmm. my awareness is on tension. It's, it's these days, it's normally somewhere in my left cheek. Um, <laughs> so that's what I'm working on. And my palate, right? The inside of my skull, that's where I'm working on that tension. Yeah. But to begin with, right? To begin with, we just start with working on how are we feeling right now, right? Mm-hmm. Are, we, are we feeling, are we reacting to something? Mm-hmm. Are we feeling angry or frustrated? Yeah. Once we can work with that, once we can notice that, then we can work with it mm-hmm. because that, right. Our, I think of, I use the law of attraction a lot, or at least I did in my thinking to begin with, mm-hmm. when I realized that we are a signal, the whole of us is a signal mm-hmm. and we are emitting that signal yeah. every second of every day. And we're attracting back based on that signal. Yeah. So if I'm feeling really angry right now, mm. I'm putting that signal off and I'm attracting into my future something mm. where I'm going to feel the same way. Mm. And so I would ask myself during the day, how do I feel right now? And do I want to feel this way again in the future? Yeah. And most of the time, my answer would be no. So then I would do something about it, right? If I want to change the future, I need to change myself right now. Yeah. Then I'm emitting a different signal. Mm -hmm. then I'm attracting something different back. So if I can catch the way I'm reacting and Mm -hmm. even just taking a deep breath in that moment is Mm -hmm. going to relax us and relax our signal. And that's kind of what meditation does. It it brings us to peace right now. So we're emitting a peaceful signal and we're attracting back peace into our future. But I wanted something to change at a deeper level. Mm -hmm. I wanted to change my base signal. So that's what EFT does. That's what feeling the feelings, Mm. feeling that physical tension and letting that go. It's changing. It's changing our base physical signal. And so it's changing our future. Our future also. Yes, that's good. I'm so grateful that you mentioned um, law of attraction right now. Like in your own understanding and experience, can you explain what law of attraction really means? Well, it basically means that we are emitting a signal and we're attracting back based on that signal. Mm. So a lot of people use that in terms of manifesting, right? They, they want yeah. something to come into their lives, but mm-hmm. everything, everything that is coming into our life is coming to our life because we have emitted a signal about it. True. So we can use it. You can use EFT in manifesting because mm-hmm. if there's something we want, it means we're not happy with what we've got right now. Yeah. So we have resistance to that, right? Because we're looking with the, for the negative. With EFT, we're looking for the negative. So if I'm not happy right now, we mm. can work on that. We can tap about what we feel like we're missing right now. Mm. Also, if there's something we want and we don't have it yet, it means mm. we have some resistance to it. Because yes. if we didn't, we would already have it. Mm. Mm. So we can tap about the resistance we have to what we want. And yeah. that releases the resistance and then the energy can flow mm. ah, okay so it's not only about you know um positive thinking and just manifesting alone but we have to let's go of the tension also in us yeah i'm not a big proponent of positive thinking because when we try when we try to think positively mm. we're suppressing what we're actually thinking hmm. whereas what we're actually thinking has yeah. some stored tension it's part of our signal and uh, if we let go of that stored tension, yes. the positive is already there underneath. Mm, so we don't mm. have to try. When we use that word try, 
we're mm-hmm. not accepting what is currently happening. Yeah. So you, you mean the right step is for us to first accept what is happening and try to let go of the negativity. That way the positivity comes out itself and we are able to not think positively also. Right. It's just, it's just there underneath. When we mm. really let go of, um, like when we really forgive someone or something, yeah. then compassion and understanding just arises. Mm. And it's really fun to experience that the mm. first time. Yeah. But then you know that's the way it is. It's already there underneath. Once we yeah. have that expanded awareness and expanded understanding, yes. it, yeah, it's just there. It's just there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you talk about you know, um, we are signals, you know, and we um, whatever signal we send out attracts what um, you know positive signals back into our lives. Basically, for, for, for a lot of people out there, it could seem so so you know abstract. What uh, we are just human beings, physical beings, and you're talking about signals. Can you explain this into in much detail? Like, how does this work? How, how can we? Are we sending out frequencies? Are we like um, routers now, or like Wi-Fi cables that send out frequencies around the world? <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> With signals. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, I can't put it in that physics, the way of physics, but, it, but we are yeah. a complex, we are complex of signals mm. because I think of us kind of a little bit like a guitar. Mm. Like we, we're, not, we're not tuned, right? If we've got tension stored in our connected tissue, and I know because I experience it, I can sense it on the inside. I know yeah. we have tension stored mm. in our connected tissue mm. and that is, we're not tuned right. Yeah. So our tuning is off. So what we're attracting back is mm. off. Mm. But if we tune ourselves, if we let go of this stored tension, we become more in tune. We become more in alignment with spirit. Mm. And we're only going to attract good back to us at that point. So, yeah, I understand it's really good. As you actually go through the process, it becomes more and more obvious as to how we replay things over and over again yeah. with different people in different um, in different arenas, different experiences. But yeah. what we're attracting back is those feelings yeah. that are familiar to us from childhood when they yeah. were programmed into us. Yes, yes. And do you have like, you know, um, courses or, you know, um, services that you offer to people in order to help them with you know, alignment with their spiritual life or alignment with them, their selves or to let go of all this negativity in them? Are there like ways you could help people out there? I do have a book. I wrote a book called A Pathway to Insight, which goes yeah. through all the steps that I went through mm. to where I am now and explains the law of attraction and how our signal gets stored in detail. Mm. So feel free to, to look that up. And I have a YouTube channel which has a demonstration of EFT, a demonstration yeah. of feeling your feelings, yeah. and some of the things in more detail. But yes. what I really want to do is I want to be spreading this information around the world. So if anyone has any speaking engagements that they would like me to come to, yeah. that's that's what I want to do next. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm going to place the, the link to your YouTube channel and also to your um, your website, basically, where the information about your book also is the info um, in, um, in the show notes of this episode. And I encourage everyone to click on the links, to watch the videos on YouTube, and also to get a copy of the book in order to, to learn about the, the steps, the four steps into, you know, um, getting insight into life or becoming much more positive people, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. So can you, can you explain, you know, we've talked about yeah there's this connection between um, being a uh, physical being a uh, spiritual being and it comes to go through um you know, connective tissues but can you explain a bit further in, um you know that connection that relationship between our physical self that we see and our spiritual being that's yeah that we don't see yeah this is fun because it's all connected i mean i've realized it's all all connected the our emotions our mental our mm. physical right now so now we know our physical is connected to our mental and emotional right because just the progression mm. that it's all stored in the physical body yeah and that physical body is part of our it's, it's our signal mm. right so i believe the connective tissue is where our soul resides mm. and as i said so releasing the tension Yes. In the connective tissue, it frees up, in my mind, it frees up the soul mm. to be comfortable in the body. Mm. And when it's comfortable in the body, two things. I think it will reside in this body for longer. So yeah. I do think people could have a longer life the more they let go of the dis-ease in the body. Mm. 
And I believe that's how we tune into spirits. The mm. less tension we have stored in our body, the more we are in alignment with spirit. And the more intuition works, the more magic happens, the more just special things that happen in your life. Yeah. So that's, to me, that's the connection between the physical and the spiritual. spiritual yes. And once we can get aligned, I believe we can enjoy more um, inner peace, enjoy, you know, um, joy, happiness. Is that true? Are there, are there more benefits from, to this? Yes. Absolutely. Life mm. becomes more fun. There's so much more depth to it, to it right? Because imagine mm. like, just hearing the words versus feeling them in your body, mm. right? The, the more awareness you have on the inside, the more yeah. awareness you have on the outside, yeah. as within, so without. Mm. So, yeah, and even, you know, even small things, you know, I my singing voice, and I will never sing in front of anybody. <laughs> Oh, I'm saying right. that now. <laughs> yeah. However, my singing voice used to be terrible. Right? There were actually some, some um, I couldn't get to some notes when I would sing. I, I could sing high and I could sing a little bit low, but in the middle there were some, some notes I couldn't get to. Mm. And that's all cleared up. Right? Mm. So the tension in my skull has released so mm. that now I can sing so that I enjoy it. I, yeah. I can, my taste buds have improved. I can mm. taste just some foods, just taste sublime. Mm. So there's all sorts of things that happen, right? My body is more in alignment. So I, my balance both mentally and physically is so much better. Yeah. And yes, I'm calm and peaceful and I will actually go out of my way to try and find things that will trigger me these days. So I will watch the news again. It's like, I want to know. Mm-hmm. what triggers me so yeah. that I can find something deeper to work on and let go. Oh, so yeah, good. there are so many benefits. Yes. Wow. So now, now we are aligned, you know, spiritually, physically. Now we've let go of every tension in us. Now we are sending out positive signals, receiving and attracting positive signals back into our lives. How can we use all of this to, to change our future and also to change the future of this planet? All of this does change our future. Even tapping for five minutes Mm. changes our future because it changes our signal, Mm. right? So even just five, 10, 15 minutes a day is going to change our personal future. Mm. But we have so much collective trauma right now. So sometimes we don't think that the collective is anything to do with us. Mm. So the part that is our responsibility is how we feel about it. So if we're hearing about, um, you know, COVID about people perhaps going to war, yes, whatever, or we're even just listening to someone else argue. Mm. Any of that, mm. our part of that is how we feel about it. Mm. And if we can recognize how we're feeling about it, we can change that. Yeah. So if we change that, right, we're so divided. I don't know where you are, but here in the States, we're so divided. Yes. And so we all have feelings about the other side, what we Mm. think of as the other side. We probably have negative feelings about them. Mm. If we feel those feelings and Mm. let them go, I believe we can all come together in peace. Mm. Mm. So, yes, I do believe we can change the world. Yes, that's a very valid point because of this time that we're in right now where we are all divided. Um, Yeah, we need that inner peace, basically, and we need to come together to to find some common grounds basically for, for ourselves to not move forward and, you know, make some changes to this world in this circumstance that we're in right now. Right. Mm. But I don't think we have to do it. We don't want to do it through positive thinking because then we're suppressing the negative. So we have to really feel how much we don't like that other side, right? We have to be true to ourselves. That's true. Yeah. And so that's what the tapping does. It's like using EFT. It's like, how exactly do you feel, right? When I'm tapping, it's like, Mm. and I spend a lot of time and I don't recommend this at the beginning for anyone. I'm just telling you this as an example. Like once I got rid of a lot of my traumas, I tapped on the words, I hate myself Mm. for a long time, probably an hour to three hours over a series of days. Mm. And just allow that to dissipate. Mm. because once it done it does it has no more power over me they're just words right they don't mean anything but a lot of people will say to you don't say you hate yourself right you can't hate it's not okay to hate but if we feel hatred inside of ourselves if we accept it Mm. then it will dissipate and i would much rather have hate be gone than have it sitting inside of myself Mm. i understand that yeah 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 which which is i mean a lot of times we just try to you know 
push it aside and say, no, I, I am not allowed to eat myself, for example. And um, we just, you know, push it aside. But you are saying we should accept it and try to let go of it also that way. If it's our truth, if we really feel that, hmm. yes. Because hmm. then it releases its power over us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's where the change, that's what we're doing at each level, right? I'm just hmm. accepting with, with the tapping, we're accepting the hmm. feelings, we're accepting hmm. the memory hmm. and letting it go. And at the deeper level of the physical sensations, we're accepting them yes. and letting them go. And even at the deeper level of the tension in the connective tissue, I'm mm. just accepting it. And when I do, it releases. Yes. Ah, I like that. Accept and let go. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So you have a book, you know, titled um, A Pathway to Insight. So can you talk to me or enlighten me about insight and how we could develop insight? I know you've talked a lot about, you know, love attraction, signals already, but in, maybe in a nutshell, just explain to me what insight means and how we all could develop insight also. Yeah, there's like a collective understanding of the word insight where mm. people talk about, right, having insight, but mm. In, in my understanding, they are talking about using the mind, going into the mind mm. and having insights. Yeah. I'm talking about seeing inside the body, mm. inside sight or inward sight. And I believe that is the original meaning of the word insight. Oh, I just wow. don't, I don't know of anyone around who talks about what I talk about. So, yeah. so that understanding Yes. or that knowledge of that capacity is yeah. not available outside mm. of us. So that's why I believe people don't talk about insight in the same way I do. So yeah. the book is about the steps to develop the insight, which I believe is actually the, it's the inner eye or the third eye. Mm. And I talk about that in the book um, because, you know, I, I've sensed what's happening on the inside. I kind of feel the release happening. I don't know whether it's the pineal gland. As I said, I don't know what what um I'm, where i'm putting my way i know where i'm putting my awareness but i don't know what i'm putting it in so it could be the pineal glands i don't yeah. know i do know it's in the center of my head head oh. i'm actually sensing from the center of my head because i can tell where i'm where i'm looking i can tell what's in front of me what's behind what's above and what's below yes so can, can, can you like me just describe briefly how we could develop this or do you have to pick up the book to to learn about this well, we just talked about it. It was all those steps. I used ah, EFT okay. for, yeah. right, for years, right? Mm, that expanded yeah. my awareness. Yeah. Then I used feeling your feelings, which expanded the awareness deeper. Mm. Then, then I was able to put my awareness inside my body. And that was the first step of insight, yes, of, right? right? Being able to sense inside the body. That was the first time I used my inner eye. Mm. And then from there, it's been a process of letting it go more and more. Oh, yes, yes. So now, now it, all, it all comes together for me, basically, like insights from the definition now is that inside eye that we have or inside eyes that we have that we use to, you know, perform this inner work that we, you talked about earlier already, basically. Yeah. yeah. And yes. a lot of the spiritual teachings talk about insight and then they talk about people who have insight and the abilities they have. Mm. which is, is really interesting for me to read um, <laughs> I because ha I have my understanding. Yes, yeah. because I have that ability to sense inside my body, mm. I can sense things outside of me. I can sense the energy in things that are happening. I can sense in other people, whether they're breathing deeply into their body, whether they're holding their body tight, because mm. I can sense that in me. Yes. So it's definitely as within, so without is such a, a key phrase. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Wow. I will encourage everyone out there to just get a copy of the book. It's available on Amazon also. It's titled A Pathway to Insight. And um, yeah, so for people out there who would still love to you know, connect with you, who would love to work with you in one way or the other, what's the best way to do this in order to get across to you? Probably the best way is my public Facebook page. Um, mm. I love writing things on there. I love explaining things on there. Um, that's Anne Hint's Wisdom. Uh, but I also have a website, anhints.com, that's got more information on if you want to, to look me up a little bit more. Yes, uh, that's great. I'm going to place the link to your website in the show notes once again. And I encourage everyone to just get across to you to ask you for the questions that we're not able to cover um, in this episode. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate everything I've been able to learn from you about you know, alignment, spiritual alignment, about accepting and letting go and 
about becoming better people in order to enjoy inner peace, positive mind, and yeah, without suppressing all these um, bad negative emotions in us. Thank you so much, Anna. I really appreciate this. Thank you, Toby. I appreciate being able to share it. Yeah, that's awesome.